Hi there, welcome to Elm Colors, I'm Erica. Today's video is the letter D in our How I Color Alphabet series videos. And D is for door. Um, these three artists are ones that you will find many, many doors in their artwork. So I've got Hannah Carlson, Johanna Basford, and Ari. And they, I mean, their artwork is gorgeous to begin with, but they all have a couple of pages in here worth very special doors. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip through and show a couple of the doors that I really like. I also couldn't think off the top of my head of any doors specifically that I've colored, um, but I know that I have some examples in these books as well. So I'm going to show you just a couple, a couple of images, and then we will. I've got some picked out that I do want to, I do want to color today too for you. So the first one that I love, absolutely love, and I've never colored it, is this one. In this one is in Enchanted Forest, and um, this is Johanna Basford, and it is such a cool, a cool, cool, cool door. Um, that one would be really fun to color. And um, that's not the one I'm going to do today, unfortunately. But yeah, I can see this with a, a beautiful color, beautiful stonework, lovely metal scroll work around there. So, so yeah, I think that's going to be fun. And then I love how she's incorporated, you know, as you're going through the book to find what the tiles are throughout the book. And then you can kind of sketch those in there too for the, the lock pad. So that one is from Enchanted Forest. And then I've got, let's look at Summer Nights, because I know that I have a few in here. There's just a couple. Now, these ones are smaller, mostly smaller doors that I've done in this book. Um, I should have had them marked. I apologize. I just have marked the ones that I want to focus on today. So you can see these are just a couple of little doors. Those are no, there's not like any real technique to those other than you know, color a little darker on the outside. This one was done with ink tents. So again, nothing really specifically um, technique related. This is the one I think we're gonna, we're gonna color today, which I have seen this one done and it's beautifully done on so many people's pages. And I think that's why I put this one off for so long because I really do love this, this whole page. But today we're just gonna focus on the door. So there's that one. Um, I know in, let me flip through this really quick and see if I can find, I don't think I have another door in this one specifically. No, I haven't colored very many actually. This is Secret Garden. Um, and I pulled this book because it has this cool little door, this little secret door at the bottom of this beautiful garden. And so I thought I would, I would color that one in. Um, so those are two of the doors we're going to be working on today. And then I know for sure that I have some samples in Romantic Country because I've colored a ton in this book. Okay, so here's one. This one is more, I think the ones that I have in here are all wood, wood tones. Um, but you can kind of see, I'm going to hold it up a little closer so maybe you can see a little bit of the definition that either that was... Um, some of it was there from the artist and some of it I added in as well. And that's kind of the technique I'm going to be showing you guys today is how I kind of add a little bit of texture and stuff to the doors. So there's a red one I did. That one is all done with um, ink tents and then I went through with some um, prism colors to add in some of the wood texture. Um, I know that there's another door in here. See this, this little tiny door, even though it's so tiny, even though these doors are so little, you can still get quite a, a decent amount of texture in there. Um, here's another one that I did. That one was all done with just ink tents. I think that's it. Um, and then these doors, I just wanted them to be colorful. So there's a little bit of shading technique on this one, um, a little bit of wood grain on this one, but everything else is just kind of a straight a straight color. Uh, a little bit of wood grain on these. Yeah. So this is the other door that I have picked out to color today. So um, let me figure out which one I want to get started with. I'm going to I'm going to show you kind of um, three different ways that I would approach a door. Um, and uh, yeah, 
So let me, let me get situated and we'll get started. Okay, we're gonna start with Secret Garden. Um, this is the one that has the tiny door. Well, it's not super tiny, but the smaller door down at the bottom corner here. And I have decided that I'm gonna do this in tones of purple. Um, like this, make this a really dark purple door. Um, when I look at this page, I kind of see, I mean, all of these colors and everything, but I do want he purple to feature heavily in this. So I think if I have this purple door here and then have purple kind of spread throughout on some flowers and maybe in the background a little bit, um, that'll be really pretty. So, okay, uh, let me get you zoomed in and we'll get started. All right, so hopefully I will be able to stay on frame here for this. Um, so typically what I do with my doors is I most of the time we'll make them out of some kind of wood grain, whether that is a colored painted wood or, um, I don't know, magical wood. I don't know what other wood would be colored. Um, but so I'll typically go in and I start with my lighter color. So I will, again, the colors will be listed in the description below. Um, but I have, I'll tell you the colors that I have um, right now, and this might change, but this is probably what it's going to be. So I've got Parma Violet, which is PC108, 1008, Imperial Violet, 1007, Dioxazine, Dioxazine, I think it's Dioxazine, Purple Hue, 132, and Black Grape, 996. Um, and the Parma Violet is really just for the lightest areas, so I'm, I'm going to use this to give like a nice light base coat. Um, and the other thing that I need to think about when I'm doing this is I would probably have these leaves. These probably leaves would probably create like a, a faded effect into the door. So what I'm going to do is when I get closer to these leaves, I'm going to be really light with my color so that I can have that neat effect come into the door. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started here and I'm just really lightly going to cover the whole door except for these two strips. I think I'm going to color those different uh, with this lighter purple, this Parma Violet, and just a real light layer. And this, again, this is a base layer, so it does, it's messy. It doesn't have to be perfectly neat. And uh, Johanna has added in some texture lines on the door too, so that you can use those to add in your texture. Um, when I do doors, my texture typically goes vertically, but I might play with those because these all all these lines are horizontal in here, so I might play with that. The other thing to remember, again, pencil stroke direction is very important. I need to add my backer page in. Hang on just a second. Okay. Uh, yeah, pencil stroke direction is very important. So door, wood grain usually goes vertically on these doors. So that's why my pencil strokes are going up and down. Okay, and then I'm going to take the next darkest color. Now this is just going to be, I'm not going to create like super detailed wood. This is just going to be like um, suggestive wood, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so I know for sure that the spaces in between the wood slats are going to be darker. So I can add a darker color there. And then I also know that underneath these pieces that go horizontally across the door, that is also going to be in shadow. So I'm going to do a little line of stuff around that way. And then I'm going to lightly, I'm not pushing hard, I'm going to just randomly drop in some lines. And you want a sharper pencil edge for this. To get those thinner lines. You want a little bit of texture. Okay, 
So now we're going to do the dioxanine purple. And again, I'm going to go through those darkest areas with that really dark purple color. We can also get underneath the lock here. And then like anywhere where shadows would be cast. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure I get underneath the railing there in the center of the wood slats again. Okay, and then the last one I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do this similar, similar thing with the black grape. And this one is really dark, it's almost black. Okay, Oop, one more area. Okay, so I've got all the shadows in. So I am going to go back in with my, um, I don't remember, dioxazine, I think is what it was. And again, I'm gonna do those just light, skinny little flicking lines. And you want to keep them going vertically. You don't want them. And sometimes it's easier if you turn your book. It just depends on how you're comfortable holding the pencil. And you don't want them to be, you want them to be kind of random. You don't want them to be the same way every time. You want to have some slats that have more lines, some that have less, some that are darker, some that are lighter. Um, it, you want it to vary because that's how nature kind of does it. Okay, so I've got my lines in and now I'm gonna come back over with the Parma Violet again. And I'm gonna add uh, another layer of that color. Okay, my next step is I'm going to take a blender pencil. So this is a Derwent blender. You could use Prismacolor, you could use uh, your Caran d'Ache blender, you could use, I think there's a Lyra one too that um, is really good. Um, but, so I'm just gonna use the colorless blender. I'm going to not, I'm not gonna press super hard, but I am gonna use it a little bit to blend my colors. And then I'm gonna take a look at what I've got left over and see if I feel like I wanna add in any more texture. So you can kind of see how this is just blending all of those colors together, but I'm not pressing super hard, so I'm not moving the color too much. I'm just kind of bringing out the richness and um, the richness of that color, those colors that I've already put down on the page. Okay, let's see how we like that. So I don't know if you can tell the difference between here and here, so you can see like this area hasn't been and this area has been used with the blender. Okay, let me just finish up with this blender pencil and then we'll talk some more. Okay, I do want to add in a little bit more um, of those texture lines, just a few. So I'm going to just come back in and again, add those random flicking lines in different places. Okay, I'm also going to use this dioxazine purple to darken up the shadows one more time. And then from the, that line that defines each of the planks, I'm gonna kinda just a little bit out from that shade a little bit so that it looks like it's like a thicker split between those. 
if that makes sense. So there's our little door. I am gonna clean it up just a little bit so we can get some of the metal work done. All right. So this is pretty much the same technique that I use in every, um, on every type of door. So even when I have just like regular wood grains, I'll have several different browns and just go in with, and just keep adding texture until I feel like it looks like I want it. So let me, um, I think I wanna do one more layer, just really lightly of this Parma Violet. The nice thing about the colorless blenders is you can blend out your pencils and then you can go in and add more as long as you don't burnish the color in. Um, you can add more layers. So you can get really deep colors. And I like that. Yeah, that was good. I like this decision to add in another layer of that Parma Violet. And again, you can kind of see how on the edges, I'm letting it fade out into white so that when I come in with my green color or whatever color I'm gonna do with those leaves, that I can fade that into the door and it looks like it's all overlapping the door. All right. Okay. So yeah, let me grab some colors for the metal work on here and I will be right back with you. Okay, so I've got three colors pulled for like an old gold kind of feel. So I've got dark brown PC946, light umber PC941, and sand PC940. So I'm hoping that these will create the look that I want. So I'm gonna start with my dark brown and go around the edges. I'm not going for a realistic look at all on this one. This is just kind of a put some color where you think it might look good type of thing. So I'm using the light umber now and very lightly shading out from where I put that dark umber or the dark brown I mean. And then I'm gonna go in with the sand All right, and then my little baby cream is still kicking, so I'm going to add that cream in there too, just to try to blend everything together a little bit better. I wanted this to have the appearance of an older kind of gold. I didn't want anything bright and shiny. Want it to look more like an enchanted door almost that's just kind of hidden in there okay there are some lines that are vertically on this and I'm not sure how I feel about I'm gonna add just a little bit in there with that dark brown and again I'm gonna go over everything with this sand color just to make it a little bit more yellow again Okay, so there's our little purple door. I'm gonna zoom you back out so you can see what it looks like in the whole page. Okay, so there he is. I think that's gonna be really cute um, once I get all of this stuff in, colored in. I'll probably end up doing some purples mixed in with some of these leaves over here just to kind of make it more of a hidden doorway. Um, but I wanted it to be purple because I wanted it to kind of have that magical, that magical feel. So yeah. So, okay. So there's door number one. I am going to get ready and uh, get all my supplies ready for door number two and we will get started on that one. Okay. For door number two, we are going to color the door in summer nights that I had picked out, which is this lovely page right here. Um, I had... I've gone online and I looked up some, um, I just basically, I just typed in pretty door in Pinterest and, and kind of scroll through what comes up. And I found one that was kind of a, a weathered uh, light turquoise blue color, like a really, really light, light one. 
Um, and I thought that this, that would be really pretty. And then the flowers and stuff that were around it were all in fuchsias. So I thought that that was a really, really pretty dynamic between the two. So uh, we're going to color in this door in those colors. And I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to use some watercolor pencils. I am using the um, Caran Dash Super Colors, but you could use any watercolors that you have. You could use actual watercolors, Neo Colors, Arteza watercolors. Any of those would probably work. And I'm gonna use this very light blue. It's called Bluish Pale. And I'm gonna use the light gray, I think. Well, maybe the, I might throw in some of that dark gray too. But this is basically, oh, I'm sorry. And let me see, we've got my blue jeans. What was the other one I was gonna throw in there? And jade green, some of this jade green. Okay, so I've got two, two grays a very light blue, a light turquoise color, and a little bit of a darker blue gray kind of color. Um, and I am just going to kind of scribble those on the paper. Not really scribble, but you know what I mean. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put those colors in the areas that I want. A layer of gray first, and then I'll go in with the darker, with the uh, actual colors, and that'll just kind of, the grays will help tone down the colors so they're not so bright. So I will, um, I'm going to record all that. I'm going to speed it up so you guys can see that process. And if there's any notes or anything that I need to make, I'll put those down in the corner as you're, as we're speeded up. So, um, yeah, so I will get started on that. Okay, got my colors all laid down. Let's go over the colors again. Um, I had, <laughs> I have the light gray and gray in the super colors that I did a base coat in, just a very light layer, um, and that's going to help to tone down the colors that are are on top here because they'll all get mixed together when I activate them. Then I have blue jeans, jade, and bluish pale. Um, I did the blue jeans color in all of the darker areas. I did. Um, a light, uh, a whole, the whole door in the bluish pale, and then I've added some of this jade um, here and there in the in the book or in the door. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start with my uh, go ahead and start with my brush, my water brush here, and I'm just gonna activate activate with that that with the water and um, probably put. I always, why am I always forgetting this? I always put my backer pages in. I don't know why I can't remember to do it on videos. Anyway, so here we go. Okay, so the only thing that I might do is I might add in some of this um, darker blue color back in. Now this is just a base layer, so it does not have to be super fancy. I'm just waiting for my water to start, there it goes. So I'm just gonna pick up some of the blue color right from the end of the pencil. Just go right back in to where those shadows are. If I feel I need to pull some of that down, I can do that too. Okay, so I'm gonna get some underneath. That, that part's still pretty wet. Um, I might need to let this dry just a little bit so I don't bleed through to my other side. 
Um, let me give that a second to dry. Okay, I got it a little bit more dry, so I'm going to add in, just adding some of this darker blue color into areas where I think that that would be shadowed. this is what the base layer looks like and like I said you can get this effect with any watercolor medium it does not have to be the Caran d'Ache super colors it can be any watercolor pencils or just even straight watercolors you can use as well um, I am going to be adding some texture with my Crayola pencils this time so I've got a little bit uh, of a mixed media thing gonna gonna happen on this page so I have pulled outer space wild blue yonder and slate. Those are the three colors that I am going to be working with. And these are all um, darker, I don't know where my color chart went, but these are all darker, well this one's like a dark, very dark blackish blue and then these are kind of gray blue colors. So we're going to see how that goes. I might grab a couple more colors. Hang on just a second. Okay, I did add uh, the turquoise in there too. So I'm going to start with this wild, or this outer space. And this is, like I said, this is a pretty dark color. So I'm gonna use it lightly, and I'm only gonna use it on the areas where it is darkest. So around the outside edges of the door, all the way around, but I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna do this section here so you can kind of see on camera what that would look like and then I will speed up the rest of the door. And this is just, like I said, a very light, light layer. And anywhere where the, the lines are already in, where um, the lines have been drawn in, I'm just gonna go over those pretty lightly Okay, and then in this section here, I'm gonna make it darker in the corners and the center, like that. And then I am gonna add some shadow along the right side of the doorknob and plate and underneath there too. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in with the slate I think and I'm just gonna add in some of those texture lines like we talked about before now when you have longer planks of wood like this you can just run your pencil straight down and it does not have to be you don't need to push hard and you don't need to keep it straight it can just be however the pencil tends to move because when you look at wood grain it's not straight lines every time it's kind of they're kind of wavy and wonky and um, I think that that looks more authentic sometimes when you can add in those textured wavy lines. Okay, um, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with my Wild Blue Yonder, just a few. All right, and then I don't really have to do too much coloring over the top of that because that color that's underneath is really what I wanted to show through. So I'm just gonna do a very light, light, light layer of the wild blue yonder over the top of the door. I am gonna come in and try to blend out where I put that darker color a little bit. Just a tiny bit. I need to add some dark in that spot right there. 
because there would be a little bit of a shadow there and right in here. Okay, so again, I'm just going in with a light layer of this wild blue yonder. And then I'm gonna add in this turquoise color as well. But that, again, I'm holding the pencil really far back and I am just barely touching the page. And you can kind of see the difference between these and I can always, like I said, I can always go back in and add in more of the, um, the texture lines if things kind of get blended out too, too much for my liking. So yeah, so I'm gonna do that on this whole door and I'm gonna speed up that process so you can see that. And I will talk to you again in a second. So there's our door done. I'm going to work on the metal work. Um, and I've got some warm grays from my Prismacolor set pulled. I've got, uh, what did I pull? I pulled 50% warm gray, 70% warm gray, and my 10% warm gray. Um, and this is going to kind of give me um, like an old, an old silvery kind of look. So I'm just gonna go in and add in my warm grit, my 70%, wherever I think the darkest areas are, then I'm gonna blend it out with my 50 and then blend all of that out with the 10%. I might come in with a little bit of the white at the end, but I don't know about that yet. So uh, I will go ahead and do that and let you guys see. So there's our door and the little metal hinges on it. And I'm gonna finish up this little doorknob with my Sparkle Pop Silver Gel Pen. I'm just gonna add in everywhere where these little, where it was kind of too narrow to even do any blending, I'm just gonna add in this silver. And I think that'll be a nice, 
um, addition to this little doorknob. I'll probably end up adding some silver here and there too on the rest of the door, on the page, but so there we go. There's our faded blue door. It's very similar in um, texture. This is pretty much what all my doors look like. Um, so we've done two color doors and the last door that I want to do is one more different technique and um, just a solid wood door. So I will um, get all that together and be right back with you. Okay, door number three is from Romantic Country and it is similar in technique to the last one we did, but I'm gonna change it up just a little bit. So we've got this page here that I decided on and my vision for this page after I sat and thought about it a little bit is I'm going to have it be like a really dark navy blue storefront um, with like warm wood shelves and a warm door and then I'll have different colors kind of mixed in for the books and stuff but so we're going to try to do um, a little bit of a marker base and then use some Prismacolors over top. Um, and the nice thing about using markers for the door is, well, I'm going to be using this um, Crayola Super Tip. It's like this, I don't know, it's a nice light orangey brown color. Um, but when you use the marker base for the door, you don't really have to worry about the streaks, especially if you make sure that your, your lines are going straight up and down because it's going to add to the overall texture of the door at, in the end anyway. Yeah, so I'm just going to go through real quick and put a light layer of this, um, this brown color over the whole door first, and then I will be back to talk to you here in a sec. So there is the base. That's just with the marker. You can tell that I'm I'm a pretty messy <laughs> colorist. I have lines going everywhere. Um, and then I've pulled a few browns, uh, a couple of warm browns and a very dark brown to add in some shading and stuff on the door. So I've got terracotta, which is PC944, chocolate, which is 1082, and dark umber, which is 947. I do need to sharpen my chocolate really quick. Hang on. Okay. This one's not very centered. Um, so my game plan is to keep most of the color of the door, this kind of lighter color. So I'm only going to do a little bit with this dark umber, and this is just going to go in the very darkest areas. So I'm going to use the dark umber in the darker spot, darkest spots, and then the chocolate out from that, and then the terracotta from there. So I will do that and let you guys see.
so here is our warm wood door. I think that our doors turned out pretty cool today. Um, so yeah, so we've got one wood. We've got this one here. I'm going to try to get all three doors on, on camera. We'll see how that goes. Uh, our nice light weathered blue. And then of course this gorgeous little purple door too. So yeah, that one's not going to, not going to go on screen very well, but here, let's do this way. There we go. So similar techniques on all three, um, but they all look pretty different. So um, I hope that that helped in some small way. I hope you enjoyed watching that today. And uh, next video will be E for, E is for eyes. So we're going to work on eyes next time. So yeah, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.